Mr. McGravy could get me to come out to school again in the morning, this early in the morning. But I am here. You guys are awesome. I love you all so much. I had a great time with those of you. Who was at the EMK Institute last week? Okay, awesome, good. The last class that I had, I thought, you know, you had all gone and they apparently went to a different one. I didn't get to meet them, but I'm excited. At least we had a nice short introduction. Did you guys have a good time there? Yeah. Yes. Nice to get a day off from school too, right? Yeah. yeah. That's the good part too. So, again, my name is Diana Desoglio. I'm one of the state reps for North Andover. I represent North Andover, Methuen, Haverhill, and Lawrence right now in the state legislature. I work at the State House in Boston. I'm not going to educate you about what we do uh, you know, in too much depth because I know that you have a fantastic teacher who has educated you like 10 times better than I could ever educate you about this process. Mr. McGravy has been great at teaching you about all the branches of government and what the state legislature does. Um, just wanted just to talk about a couple of things that have been going on in the legislature actually recently that I think uh, that you understand uh, based on what you've been watching on television. How many have heard of the March for Our Lives movement? Right? The gun reform movement that's going on and a lot of younger people are involved in the March for Our Lives movement demanding common sense gun reform from Congress, right? And there is a movement of people at the state level who have been also demanding action from their state legislators. Massachusetts currently has some of the strongest gun laws in the country right now, but we can always look to make more reforms and re-examine laws. And uh, a couple of weeks ago, we actually did uh, a high-risk um, we did a gun reform bill at the State House, and we had groups like Moms Demand Action who came in, and these are moms who you know, have seen gun violence firsthand, and they came into the State House and they let their voices be heard about the need for common sense gun reform. And we also had a lot of students from the March for Our Lives movement. We had a girl from Andover who actually was the leader of the march in Boston. Did you guys hear about the march in Boston? Did any of you go to it? How many people actually got to go to the march in Boston? A couple of you, that's pretty cool. So we also have groups though, however, we have the um, National Rifle Association, the NRA. Has anybody heard of the NRA? Okay, everyone's heard of the NRA. And the Gun Owners Action League, and they also came in and they explained to us their concerns about gun reform. They were worried about people's rights and making sure that people who weren't using their guns for doing bad things had access to them for things like hunting and, and whatnot and that their rights weren't being invaded by the legislature. So they came in and there was a very somewhat testy debate a couple of weeks ago at the State House. We did end up having that debate and we did end up um, passing the gun reform legislation. Republicans and Democrats ended up voting for it and we passed that gun reform legislation. But it was due to this sort of movement of the youth in our communities and the youth nationwide. And I think it's really great that Mr. McGravy has us coming out to talk to you guys like this because I think a lot of times younger people, <laughs> I was young not so long ago, <laughs> but I think that younger people a lot of times, I know that I did, I thought government, you know, what's, what's up with government, it's a bunch of old people you know, yelling at each other all the time, and I don't want anything to do with it. You know, turn the channel, put on the show that I want to watch instead. Why do I want to watch the news? Why would I want to read a newspaper? None of that impacts me. But I think that recently, what you guys have been seeing is that a lot of stuff that we vote on really does impact you and can make all the difference, can even make a difference on maybe even deciding whether or not people live or people die. These are serious things we're voting on. Um, gun rights, gun reform, huge issue right now. And changes are being made because of this youth movement that we're seeing. You guys are taking the lead, the millennials are taking the lead on making people in government pay attention and realize that your voice is important. And I guess I just like coming out today just to let you know that your voice is really important and that we do hear you and that because of your voice we've recently taken action at the state house and we did do gun reform legislation again bipartisan republicans and democrats ended up voting for it so 
Something that's a little bit less serious, but also really important, is the issue of driving, right? So a lot of you are in the eighth grade. You're all in the eighth grade, right? Okay, so you guys rule the school right now, so congratulations. <laughs> and how many of you are going to North Andover High next year? Okay. And how many of you plan on, in a couple of years, trying to get your license? Okay. I'm sure you're excited about that, right? But when you go to get your license, you're going to have to do a bunch of things to make sure that, you know, first of all, you can obtain your license. And after you obtain it, you have to follow the laws associated with having your license and with driving. Can you guys give me some examples of some state laws? Because I know you guys talked about a lot of federal stuff when you went to the EMK Institute. But can you guys talk about some state laws that have to do with driving a car? Texting? Yep, no texting and driving, right? No eating and driving. You can eat while you drive, <laughs> but, but that's a good one. The texting and driving, good. You can't drink. You can't drink alcohol, right? So, OUIs, right? Big deal. What about seatbelts, right? Put on your blinkers, right? Use your signals. What else? What is it? Right, your lights have to be working. Actually, we passed, not too long ago, just a couple of years ago while I was in the legislature, we passed uh, a bill into law that states that if it's raining, you have to have your headlights on. And that wasn't the law a couple of years ago, so that's actually something recent, so that's a good one. Some other stuff? I'm sorry. Yeah, you can't have windows that are tinted too dark so that you can't see in. There's a certain level. I don't know the exact number, but there's a certain level of tinting that you can get to. Um. No, like, um, having your music too loud. Yep, no disturbing the peace, right? Speed limit. So, so these are all good, so yep. <coughs> your learner's permit. Yeah, Caitlin, what's this one? So Caitlin's my intern director over here. She was one of Mr. McGravy's students years ago. She's at North Andover High now. And she just had this happen, right? Six months after you get your license and then you can grab other people. Right. And you just were allowed to last week, right? So don't worry. So all the kids that are interning for me, Caitlin can drive you around now. Congratulations. Okay? No drugs. Right. No drugs, right? Hopefully no illegal drugs at all, never mind when you're driving, especially not when you're driving. But these are just some examples of state laws. We're actually going to be taking up soon, hopefully. There's a push to take this issue up in the state legislature right now. Everyone knows that you can't text while you're driving, right? No Facebooking, no texting, whatever. And you're looking down at your phone, you can't see what's going on on the road, so no texting while driving. Another issue, however, is whether or not you can even hold your phone in your hand and talk on it while you're driving, okay? So there's a bill that's before the legislature right now. Thank you so much. There's a bill before us that says that some of us don't think that you should be, some of us think that you shouldn't be able to use your cell phone at all while you're driving, yes? You can use it because of Bluetooth, right? Yep, because there's Bluetooth, right? So there's there's arguments on both sides of this. So a lot of people think, hey, like, leave me alone, give me my rights, I should be able to talk on my phone while I'm driving, it's not a big deal, I can totally pay attention and multitask, like stop invading my personal space, you can't control me, I'm gonna drive and do whatever I wanna do, and I think that this is totally safe. Of course I'm not gonna text and drive, but it's ridiculous to tell me I can't even talk on the phone while I'm driving. And then there's another argument Hey, like, no, I, anybody who's talking on their phone while they're driving is distracted from the conversation. They have to, at some point, actually touch their phone and enter in uh, some of the information. They have to be able to turn it on and turn it off. They have to be able to dial the number. Um, but then there's the argument with the Bluetooth, right? So there's all these, like, different competing opinions. I'm going to give you guys just 30 seconds to figure out where you stand on this issue, and we're going to have just a very quick mock debate on this like we do in the state legislature because I want to hear what you guys think about it. So 30 seconds, talk amongst yourselves, and we'll get you back in a minute.
Thank you very much. <laughs> this is awesome. I'm going to put it on my bag. Awesome. Got to make sure I bring this with me. Cool. Alright, you guys ready? Alright, so we're gonna have a little mock debate right now. And I know you guys know how to do this. Did you do some of this? Um, at EMK? Yeah. You do some debating, right? Okay, so state law. You're all now state representatives. Congratulations. You're all the honorable, the honorable representatives for the town of North Andover. And I'd just like to hear your opinions. Get up and try to convince your colleagues, your classmates, on what you think, why you think the bill should be passed into law to make, if you're for this bill, you think that it should be illegal to hold your phone in your hand while you're driving and talk on it. If you're against this bill, you think that that shouldn't pass and that everybody should be able to hold their phone in their hand while they're driving. Okay? Get it? All right, can we get some volunteers to get up and start the debate? Yep. Can I stand up? Yeah, stand up and address your colleagues, because you're not trying to convince me, you're trying to convince your colleagues to vote the way that you want them to vote. So, our neighboring state of New York is very smart, and they have passed this rule where you cannot talk on your phone while you're driving, so I think if New York does it, then Massachusetts should do it too. Thank you, Representative. Either one. One of you get up, and then the other one can get up afterwards. <laughs> um, so I do think this bill should be passed. It's certainly more beneficial, although some people do like to talk on their phones. And you know, it's not exactly the most dangerous. It would certainly be more beneficial for the public to pass this bill. Uh, may I propose a modification to the bill? Uh, Certainly. An amendment. Yes, hey, we take amendments all the time. That's how we get half the stuff passed. So, uh, <laughs> instead of uh, just flat out banning the use of cell phones while driving, I feel like if the driver has, like, say, five years of a accidentless uh, background while driving, they should be allowed to use their phone. But, say, if they got into a car crash last Thursday, like they always do, <laughs> Fair enough. We'll consider that amendment, Representative. Thank you so much. Um, we'll go to you next. I, my, my stepfather has like a magnet to hold my phone, so his phone, so it's kind of not like. But I think people should be able to hold their phone. Thank you. Did you want to get up? Can you stand up on just so I can't hear? No, I don't. I didn't okay. <laughs> Hi, Phil. How are you? Good. Good to see you. <laughs> Thank you. Yep. I believe that people should be able to hold their phones while they drive because some people might not be fortunate enough to have cars that have Bluetooth in it. So it's rather unfair to let them not be able to make a phone call. Thank you, Representative. Yes, Representative. Uh, I think that like, if you have like, Bluetooth, you have Bluetooth in the car, you should be able to hold your phone you don't Okay. All good points, guys. Yep. I think people should be able to talk on the phone while they're driving because they have like so much new technology that you can just press speaker and then you could talk. And it's probably just like talking to the passenger in the car. Okay. Maybe. Good. No, good points. Yep. Uh, I think you should be able to talk on your phone while driving because you're not looking at your phone, you're looking at the road. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, I think that a with a good chunk of our population actually running off of Bluetooth, that we should actually allow them to use it because they actually just hit a button on the steering wheel, like Siri pretty much, and you just tell them that you want to call somebody. 
So that's interesting. So a lot of the stuff has to do with technology. I actually remember when I first ran, this question came up, and I was thinking to myself, eventually technology will help to solve the issue, right, of hands-free cell phone use while driving? Because you can say, hey, Siri, and a lot of the newer cars, right, and just ask your phone to make a phone call for you. Um, you can actually talk a text to your car, right? And we just, just because of the sake of time, we're just going to go with anybody who hasn't had a chance to talk yet, okay? I just have one more thing I can add. Yep. I think you should be able to talk on the phone because if you're driving alone and you're tired, it may be a way to keep yourself awake. Okay. Um, I have a modification. Um, it's if you're going at a certain speed, then you shouldn't be able to use your phone. Like, if you're going at high speeds on the highway, you shouldn't be able to use your phone because that can, like, cause a crash. And, but, like, say if... Like you're at a stoplight, you should be able to use your phone. Um, like if it's a private work call, you should be able to use your phone because like you don't want other people in the car listening into your conversations. Thank you. All very good points. So, just for the sake of time, okay, we get we're gonna move this along. I'd love to just keep this debate going for the next half an hour or so, but we do we are in a time constraint today. We are taking this bill up. We're going to take a quick vote. I just want to gauge the support amongst Mr. McGravy's class today and see how you guys feel about this issue so I can take that opinion back to the legislature with me. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just say, we'll just say, this is pretend, right? Okay, so thank you for the uh, proposed amendments today. The two amendments ended up failing, unfortunately. They were both great ideas, okay? Both great ideas. Uh, just because we can't debate every single amendment, right? So we're going to say it's just a clean bill. No amendments were added on to it. It's just as is. If you think it should be illegal to hold your cell phone in your hand while you are talking on the phone instead of having to use a Bluetooth, you are for this bill's passage. If you are opposed to that and you don't think people need to use their Bluetooth and they should just be able to talk on their phone as is, then you are against this bill's passage, okay? I'm just gonna gauge your support. How many would be in favor of this? Raise your hands. In favor of the bill's passage. Okay, Mr. McGravy, what do you think here? It might be a 50-50 again, <laughs> like the last class. How many opposed? The opposed. Oh yeah, the opposed have it. Okay, so the bill is not passed in Mr. McGravy's class. Um, <laughs> not passed to be engrossed into law. And those of you who are in favor of the bill's passage, we will continue to bring this issue up. We'll continue to try to convince your colleagues, right, to change their minds and give them new information that might sway their vote for the next time that this comes up. And maybe we'll have future opportunities to take this bill up. But for now, it is not a law that you cannot use your phone while you are driving. Thank you for participating today. You're <laughs> so I did just want to really quickly, before we turn it over to Judge Mike, I wanted to, um, I wanted to just let you know, I know Mr. McGravey's told a lot of you, we do have internships this summer available. Five of these kids are going to be doing it. Yep, so for anybody else, though, um, you know, government's not for everybody. But if you are interested, please feel free. My, uh, my intern director is sitting right back there. Caitlin's back there. She can take your contact information if you want to get more info about the internship. You get to go to the State House during the summertime for the summer internship program. Um, and you also uh, can choose to be in the district. So there are two opportunities, okay? So thank you so much for your time. Over to Judge Mike.